Hey class, welcome back. We're getting into part two of our field trip down to the Van Gogh experience. Welcome back class. Today we're going back to the Van Gogh experience. We're diving some more into it and um, right now we're getting into the the big room experience. So let, let me break this down for you. So the basic way to describe this was it was a really plush carpeted school gym. That's basically the structure overall. Now, all, as I was looking up, cause I'm, I'm, you know, a tech guy. So I want to get into all the tech stuff, uh, real little snippet of it up on the top around the rim of the gym is the, there's these little holes that are cut out about yay big, uh, that the projector light comes through. You can definitely tell the projector has been recessed back. So it's not sticking out. So I don't know what kind of projector. Um, sorry, I can't tell you that, but I can tell you that it is a very, very powerful projector because of how they're shut um how they're casting light from one side of the room to the other side of the room and there was about 12 12 in total about four on the long walls and then two on each of the other on the front and the back what they're doing is they're stitching together the same video loop uh and it's just cascaded along the walls it does kind of come on the floor a little bit and it kind of just goes across the, the the floor and it, it it's cool but you the whole experience is just kind of lay back in this serene enjoy and enjoy in this serene place and enjoy the everything going on around you so it's like living inside of the painting after this i'm even going to be doing a third version of this where it's just the you guys are just watching and experiencing that because i think that that as a painting lesson would be a really fun thing to do so that's going to be the next video that comes out i'll do a little painting tutorial on top on the front end that i usually do for this kind of experiment stuff and it should be a lot of fun all right so let's dive into a little more work of vincent van gogh going into his life and kind of the timeline of his works giving you a little more body to to play around with vincent van gogh was born in the netherlands in 1853 and died in france in 1890. he was clearly aware of his social problems from a very young age and he devoted himself to the care of the poor and the sick with such a strong social conscience he had first felt called to to a religious life but in the end, he failed to become a pastor. Vincent van Gogh developed an interest in painting by illustrating scenes from the lives of miners in the Bornage region of Wallonia during the late 1870s. Let me reiterate again, I took German. So pronunciations for me is kind of just, I'm doing the best I can. It was here that he made his first drawings of artistic studies, and as we know from his copious correspondence, 844 letters that have survived, of which 652 were addressed to his brother Theo. Several trips to Paris during this period gave him the opportunity to enjoy the rich artistic life of the city and visit museums and art galleries. On his return to the Netherlands, the climate and the landscapes that influenced him, coloring his canvases with somber, earthy tones, and he also painted his first still lives then. He spent two years in Paris where he had met and inspired by the best painters of the Impressionistic movement. Attracted by the luminous nature of the southern skies and the warm colors, he left for the south of France, settled it, deciding to settle then in Arles. He painted scenes of daily life in Provence. His bright color palette and style literally immersed the viewer in his compositions. Troubled throughout his life by poor mental health, epilepsy, and schizophrenia, these crises became more frequent and violent. His paintings bear the mark of his unstable, tormented personality. Excessive tobacco and alcohol, tiredness and health problems made his condition worsen. So much that one evening during a quarrel with his friend and partner Gagon, he cut off his own ear. After this event, he chose to enter a psychiatric hospital in saint Remy de provence This institution was located in a remote area surrounded by wheat fields, vineyards, and olive groves, which would become the subjects of many of his paintings. Van Gogh suffered from several devastating epileptic fits, which prevented him from working, leaving him bedridden for weeks. Once recovered, he decided to join his brother in Paris and move into the suburb of Anvers. I'm going to put the words I mispronounce below. In 1890, Vincent van Gogh finally returned to Paris where he painted his last paintings, including the famous Wheatfield and Crows. In the end, he took his own life at the age of 37. His final painting, critics and historians alike gently, generally considered Wheatfields and Crows to be van Gogh's final work. It is through creating this painting that Vincent fought against despair, loneliness, and exile. The picture represents his anxious state of mind, symbolized by the dark, threatening sky, and empty, un 
peopled fields, seeming to invoke absence, three roads going different ways to indicate indecision, and the presence of the crows. Like a bad omen, every sign of death, they create an anguish atmosphere, as if proclaiming an inevitable fate. In his final works, the fields and the plains of the countryside are empty. No more peasants, not even a reaper. Only nature abides for no one. During his life, Van Gogh's artistic journey spanned cities and rural townships in France and Belgium. His greatest creative strides were made principally in these three locations, Paris, Saint-Rémy-de-Provence, and Orléans. His ten best-known paintings, Starry Night, Sunflowers, Wheat Field with Crows, The Potato Eaters, sorry, I'm, I am a southern guy after all, The Potato, pot, pot, Potato, I'm really trying hard. There's certain words that we just can't say without the accent coming out. Cafe Terrence at Night, Starry Night Over the Rhone, Bedroom at Olas, Almond Blossom, Self Portrait with Bandaged Deer, and Irises. Van Gogh created over 2,000 works of art in his short lifetime, 900 paintings, and 1,100 drawings and sketches. The majority of his art was created in the last 10 years of his life, with an average of a new piece every 36 hours. Van Gogh remains a hugely impactful and beloved figure in art. Diving a little more into the relationship between Van Gogh and Gon in a yellow house in Arles, 
Van Gogh decided to share his home with his artistic contemporaries. After inviting his friend Gauguin to stay on several occasions, Van Gogh was nervous at the arrival of the legendary Gauguin. The beginning of their cohabitation appeared to go well. They shared expenses and Gauguin cooked decent meals. They allowed themselves to be influenced by one another's style and subject matter. Gauguin painted Van Gogh painting sunflowers and Van Gogh painted Gauguin's armchair. But the harmony was superficial and the relationship was mercurial. Vincent's aggressive and disorderly character also made their cohabitation intense. Gagan wrote to his painter Emile Bernard, Everywhere and in everything, I found a disorder that has shocked me. The color box could hardly contain all of those tubes. Crowded together, never closed, in spite of all this disorder, this mess, something shown out of his canvases and out of his talk too. The schism ran deeper as well. Their artistic perspective was wildly divergent. Van Gogh's abilities were to paint from nature while Gagan encouraged his friend to paint from memory. And in November of 1888, Gagan stated it plainly, Vincent, I do not see eye to eye, especially as regards to painting. He is a romantic and I'm rather inclined to a primitive state. Gagan wrote to a friend that they had an incom incompatibility of temperament. One of the most infamous events of, of Van Gogh's troubled life was an inc incident involving his left ear. Let's talk about one of my favorite paintings here, The Bedroom at Alaz. October of 1888. If you hear a voice within you say you cannot paint, then by all means paint, and that voice will be silenced. A quote by Van Gogh. Van Gogh's immediate surroundings were always a strong source of inspiration, and this was the case with the Yellow House at Alaz in the south of France. He lived here from February of 1888 to, until December of 1890, and built his first studio here. The dominant object in this oil painting is a solid and simple bed. Seemingly violating the rules of perspective, Van Gogh explained the deliberate choice to his brother Theo. He wished to flatten the interior, leaving out the shadows so that the picture resembled the Japanese prints that he found so inspiring. Some of Vincent's paintings hang above the bed, giving us a clue as to the work he wished to surround himself with. The pieces, Amant, the poet, the and Pinair a Elatos. Totally butchered that one. Feature friends and colleagues. Of the room's palette, Van Gogh stated, I had wished to express utter repose with all of these very detailed tones. Vincent also painted two sm similar pieces. The first was created at the request of Theo. The original had been damaged and awaited restoration. That painting currently resides in the Art Institute in Chicago. Van Gogh produced a third, smaller version that he offered to his sister. And in 1920, a Japanese art collector bought the second reproduction. It was eventually gifted to the Musée d'Orsay 
In Paris, after the signing of the 1959 peace treaty between France and Japan. In addition to providing us a glimpse into the artist's life and style, we also know that Van Gogh was very satisfied with this trio of paintings. When I saw my canvases after my illness, what seemed to me the best was the bedroom.
The painting, Vincent Van Gogh's Tree Roots, his last known work. It is good to love many things, for therein lies the true strength, for whoever loves such performs much, and can accomplish much, and what is done in love is done well. A quote by Van Gogh. Tree Roots is the final art Vincent Van Gogh created. He created it just hours before he took his own life. Prior to confirming the date of its creation, his, this radical departure in style led art critics to believe that tree roots came from an earlier fascination with abstract art. The exact dates surrounding the painting were subject to much debate until an impossibly lucky clue unlocked the secret to the work 130 years later. In May of 2020, Roger Van Der Veen, scientific director of the Van Gogh Institute, sorted old postcards in storage. One image in particular attracted his attention. It was a landscape in auvers sur ares photographed between 1900 and 1910. The shrubs featured the same roots as those in Vincent's last painting. Van der Veen instantly recognized his location of the mysterious painting. At first glance, the work seemed to consist of a muddle of bright colors and abstract forms, yet in the postcard, identical tree trunks and roots could be seen along the ground slope. Scientific director Van der Veen explained, because this painting was unreadable until now, we did not see what was happening. Now we know that this is something completely banal that Vincent van Gogh observed along the edge of a road. A last testament in the form of a final canvas. Van der Veen concluded, Vincent van Gogh leaves this message. Life goes on. It goes on without me. I stop here. And this last painting really is his final farewell letter. May 1889 to May 1990, stay at the St. Paul de Masol Asylum. So getting into the darker times. I put my heart and my soul into the work and I have lost my mind in the process. A quote by Van Gogh. Plagued by hallucinations, Van Gogh was committed, admitted into the St. Paul Asylum. Turning one room into a dedicated studio space, Van Gogh created 150 paintings and nearly 100 drawings in just one year. Much of the painter's enduring work was created during this immensely prolific year. Even in the time of great personal darkness, Van Gogh filled his canvases with light. He painted a myriad of works depicting the asylum, including the vestibule, which inspired this abstracted experience. I thought this was really cool because of the 3D element that you can craft by just using cardboard and simple things together. I thought it was wonderful. I don't know anything with clarity, but seeing the stars makes me dream. A quote by Van Gogh. The immortal painting, The Starry Night, first emerged from his brush on the 25th of May, 1889. Van Gogh's confinement began positively, as he felt safe and reassured within his new confines, but month-long periods of violent psychosis soon followed. Emerging from these deeply disturbed periods, emerging from these deeply disturbed periods, Van Gogh regained complete lucidity. He resumed painting at a frenzied stride. The feverish pace is felt in the surging torrents of color. Glimpsed through his bedroom window, Van Gogh's surroundings provided inspiration. Van Gogh painted the garden and the vi vibrant flower beds and the enclosed field as he studied each day. On supervised outings, Van Gogh was permitted to paint the countryside. Cypress, olive, and olive and trees emblazoned his canvases. Wheat field with cypresses and almond blossoms and many more. I dream of painting and then I paint my dream. A quote by Van Gogh. Though he had no models to paint, Van Gogh's imagination was undaunted. He began to reinterpret the works of artists he admired, such as Rembrandt, Delacroix, Delmir, Dor, and above all, Millet. Millet's peasants and the, laborers, uh, and the laborers in the fields particularly inspired his The Reaper, peasant woman binding sieves, and the siesta. Vincent's relentless painting only ceased during periods of overwhelming psychosis, and only one painting emerged from such a crisis, a self-portrait. Painted in the summer of 1889, Van Gogh's image muted. It represents a haunted reflection of the artist. Nearly a year into his commitment, Van Gogh painted on the thresholds of eternity. The crumpled, defeated figure is a heartbreaking portrait of a man overwhelmed by the cruelties of the existence. A month later, Van Gogh was released. Dr. Payton, the supervisor, in his treatment noted, this, noted in the registry. The patient, though calm most of the time, 
has had several attacks during his stay in the establishment, which lasted from two weeks to one month. Between his attacks, the patient was qu perfectly quiet and devoted himself with adorning to his painting. On the day Van Gogh left the asylum, Pate wrote one single word in the comments column, recovery. On the 27th of July of the same year, Van Gogh took his life. He was only put into the, into the asylum in May of the previous year. By the end of the July, he took his own life. Very short time frame. Very short stay.
One thing I did, had no clue about, again, I like the man's work, but I don't really dive into his stuff very often. His extensive work in Japanese culture, and that's what we're going into next. Van Gogh and the Japanese Prince. The way to know life is to love many things. A personal quote by him. Vincent van Gogh first encountered Japanese prints during a stay in Antwerp in the winter of 1885 to 1886. He was immediately in taken with a radically different artistic style. Inspired, he sought out Jap Japanese illustrative art wherever he could find it. I really kind of want to make like a manga reference here, but I'm not going to. In February, he met with Siegfried Bing, a famous Parisian art dealer. He left that meeting with more than 600 Japanese prints. This fascination and influence clearly on display in his paintings, Bridge in the Rain, or the portrait of Pierre Tangua. His imagination soared upon encountering the Japanese engraving techniques. Unexpected framing, flat colors, diagonal compositions, flowing lines, this fresh inspiration brought new energy and style to Vincent's critique and work. The power of this influence is clearly visible in the courtesan. He confined in his brother Theo in a letter, I envy the Japanese, the extreme sharpness that everything seems to have. They make a figure with a few confident strokes. By early 1888, Van Gogh grew wary of Paris. He traveled to Provence and eventually moved to Arles. He finally found the color that, and light that he had sought. A few months later, he wrote to his sister, Wilhelmine, I don't need Japanese art here because I'm always telling myself that here I'm in Japan. I just have to open my eyes and paint what I see in front of me, that which touches me. The strong influence of the Japanese master still resonates within his paintings. Consider the diagonal composition, dark contours, and tight framing of such pieces as the Almond Blossom. Though he never had an opportunity to, tra to travel to Japan, the influence of masters created a striking impact that changed his art forever. This is one thing that truly resonates with me in some of the work that I create. I'm I'm mainly a ceramics person in that I like working with clay primarily. It's kind of my thing. That's what I'm into in my style by either classic Japanese style ceramics or classic Roman and Greek styled ceramics. It's this blend of kind of merging those two mentalities together that gives me more of what I like to make now, which is this modern kind of sci-fi element of modern Japan with classic antiquity and that's kind of my thing and so reading that and and hearing kind of his own words kind of pull out why he's how that influences him i totally identify with that it's interesting stuff Awesome guys, lots of information here. I hope that you guys got something fun out of this engaging experience. As always, I hope that you take something with you and um, just lead you a little more into the life of Van Gogh and, and appreciating his works. As always, let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do, which is don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, and students as we possibly can. And as always, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. Other than that, I will see you guys next class. So go do some more research on Van Gogh. Enjoy the enjoy the tour again. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if it comes to your town and you can get tickets, by all means, go. I, I definitely want you guys to go see it if you possibly can. But I also know that there's a lot of people out there who won't have that chance to go. And I don't want you guys to miss out on such a beautiful experience. Again, all this was from my experience when I went down there. Again, all the information that I got, it's all from them. So hope that you guys got something awesome out of it. But other than that, I'll see you guys next class. Later, guys. Sorry. I'm, I am a Southern guy, after all. The potato... Pot, pota, potato... 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 I'm really trying hard.
there's certain words that we just can't say without the accent coming out. Potato eaters. Potato. Potato. Potato eaters. <laughs> 